Welcome, everybody. <laughs> okay, welcome, everybody. Welcome, Vladimir. Uh, we are now in Creswick and are looking forward to your presentation of conjectures, please. Okay, thank you very much, Holger. Thank you very much, everybody, to, to come to Creswick or to tune in online. So historically, when we prepared the application, we put three directions we would like to investigate and some explicit problem and conjecture. So my initial goal was to speak about this. But first of all, during the Thursday meeting, we decided to make two out of three, which means we cancel one of them. And also uh, in half a year, a lot happened. So there are some other changes. But the general direction is the same. So it is to make a link between finite and infinite dimensional integrable system. So both words have the word integrable inside. They actually is done by separate methods and separate people. So the kind of general con uh, concept of the meeting, one of them is to combine the sciences, to use finitely dimensional iterable system in study of infinite dimensional cases and vice versa, infinite dimensional iterable system in study finite dimensional interval systems. So uh, I already uh, gave some detail and discussion Thursday. It was not really announced and maybe not everybody was there. Some of, some, some, some of us were there, of course. So uh, I will speak about two directions we discussed there. And then a goal of today is in particular to, 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 to decide what to do. So one can concentrate on one of them, one can concentrate on both, one can choose anything else. I am pretty happy with any output of the discussion. So uh, uh, the, one of the possible direction is application of infinite dimensional systems, interval systems to polynomial integrable geodesic flows. And I will give definition what does it means polynomial integrable geodesic flows on surfaces. So it is two-dimensional since we can see the two-dimensional manifold. Actually, G is a Riemannian metric. We assume it's positive signature for, 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 and therefore one can write the Hamiltonian of the geodesic form. So the kinetic energy corresponding to the system in this form, yeah? So P is a momenta, the coordinates on the cotangent uh, space to every point and x1 x2 is a local coordinate system of the manifold it is the same form but by the Riem Riemann observation or by locally or by uniformization theorem globally we can assume makes this assumption so the information on the about the metric is uh, is hidden in this coefficient as else next we have this question whether there exists a function of the form which is polynomial in momenta and homogeneous polynomial, you see that we have a coefficients which are locally function on our manifold, depends on the coordinate x1 and x2, which are coordinate on the manifold. And P is just polynomially comes inside. You see the homogeneously comes inside, it is not a restriction. Uh, so I didn't write the word, of course, uh, our, we still look the function, which is, I uh, know it's written here, which is an integral, such that the Poisson bracket with h is equal to zero. And then under this assumption, one can concentrate on integrals which are polynomial in momenta, uh, which are homogeneous polynomials momenta, because if there is a sum of uh, terms of different homogeneity, then each of them is integral as well. So of course, one can write it as a system of PDEs. And actually, this is already in PDEs systems, which can be unwrapped as a system of PDEs on the unknown function A's coefficient and on the unknown function lambda. And then if you do it, it is a system of K plus two PDEs. K is, is the degree of the polynomial on K plus two 
unknown functions of two variables. In the terminology of lecture two, it is system of high dynamic type. So can be written in the form that the unknown, uh, unknown functions, which are lambda a zero a n. So this is a known vector of dimension. Uh, well, it's function. So it of dimension n plus two is equal some matrix which depend on lambda and the coefficients, some explicit, explicit written matrix multiplied by the vector. This one is the de 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 derivation with respect to x1, and this one is derivation with respect to x2. And this vector stays here as well, lambda zero uh, n, yeah? It's a system of hydrodynamic type, and actually this integral, I'll comment on this later. So, in this direction, we there are two planned arrangements. One of them is the talk of uh, Misha Bialy. It will be the day after tomorrow, and it will the talk where the problem, this problem, which is clearly the problem for in finite dimensional integral system, will be related to an infinite dimensional integral system. Yeah. So actually, the system of dynamic type, which I discussed. Uh, few minutes ago, it is integral system. Then the next thing would be a range discussion of Sylvan and Yuri on this topic, uh, where basically a background, so the standard tools that experts know, but not expert probably don't know, will be discussed. So I don't really know how this arrangement will be uh, will be organized. So Sylvan is here in Jena, Yuri is uh, in Kresvik. Uh, I hope that Yuri or maybe Sylvan uh, will kind of uh, take, the, uh, so uh, communicate to us when when it's going to happen. And of course, everybody is uh, welcome to, to join the discussion, probably will be via Zoom. And also uh, we have a group of participants with proven experience in infinite dimensional uh, integral flows, interdimensional geodesic, integral geodesic in a finite, sorry, not a distinction, in polynomial integral geodesic flows. And I underlined those who are in Kreswick and the first part of people contain uh, people having uh, papers in super systems. And the second part of the people of having people in infinite dimensional system, and possibly I also had some experience in also. Uh, no, this this one is those who have experience in uh, normal integral system without super, super integral. So, what could be the goals of this project, and what could be motivation to? to go for those goals. Uh, the kind of ultimate goal, which probably is out of reach, is to describe all two-dimensional metrics on surfaces admitting on trivial interest polynomial momenta could be asked locally, globally, could be asked under additional assumptions. It was asked by classic, sometimes it's actually explicitly. It has physical relevance, at least in classical physics, and it is a hard problem in the sense that many people uh, broke their tools trying to solve it. So what is known? Uh, one of the easy to formulate result is due to uh, Kolokolcev. And the statement is that we, if you consider the problem globally on closed surfaces, then if the surface has negative electricity, so if it has more than one handle, then it admits no integral polynomial momenta. Of course, one integral always exists because H itself, which is quadratic moment is integral, but any function of it is also integral, but besides those, there is nothing else. This result and also the result of Kolkartsov uh, will be subject of the discussion of Silvan and Yuri mentioned above, and it may be interesting for those who doesn't know how to prove it. It's a very nice result. And it's a method which, in the case you never have seen them, it's a method which which uh, may be new for you, but say very easy. So.
So Kolkatsov also did the first two lines of this table. K is the degree of our integral. And in the case of everything, uh, if it's linear, everything is known. I mean, it was formally possibly done in Kolkatsov, but it's not a big deal. Quadratic case, it's it is it is some work to be done. It was done with Kolkatsov. He did some mistake, but was corrected by some other researcher. And then if you go further in K in degree, then there is actually nothing known. There are some examples uh, on the sphere, and there is simply nothing known on the torus. Okay, there are some results assuming additional assumption, but if you just take the the statement as it is, it is completely open. So the, the it's not even clear what to conject, but in the literature, the form conjecture is the most popular. It stays here. If the geodesic flow of remain metric on the two torus has a non-trivial integral, which is polynomial in lost degree at least one, I mean, to avoid stupid things, yeah? Then it has an untrivial Killian vector field or a trivial quadratic integral quadratic in velocities. I put here velocities. Uh, it is actually the same as momenta because we can identify tension and cotangent bundle, and it's really kind of I should have written here momenta is not mathematical, uh, not mathematical mistake, but I, I, I still should have done it. Uh, so a similar problem was also put in the proposal concerning the sphere. And then the conjecture would be whether one can have stack example in any K. And it's indeed true. It is a recent result on me. So I did not wait for you. Sorry for this. And uh, so on the sphere for every degree, there exists matrix admitting on trivial integral polynomial moment of degree K and not admitting uh, uh, integral polynomial of small degree, but uh, it's only some examples. Yeah, it is more or less one series of examples. It formally contains functional parameter, but still one series of example. And uh, so, uh, it, 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 so just the full the complete classification is far of reach and uh, I. Um, I don't think it's it's a topic for 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 this session, but maybe some for for later. So let me comment on relation to infinite dimensional integral systems. As I already mentioned, the problem can be uh, unwrapped as a PDE system of holonomic time of n plus two unknown functions. This number n plus two can be reduced. There exists trick. There are many tricks. The one of Kolokoso will be explained in the Silvan Yun discussion. The one of Bialy Mironov in Bialy Talks. There are additional tricks. The one suggested by Agafonov reduces to still on an n unknown function. This is missed in my case. It should be n unknown function. Yeah. There's also n equations. Yeah. But it's it's minor. Yeah. So it's just. Uh, the system is integrable in the sense of lecture two. And this will be hopefully explained by Misha Bialy in his talk Wednesday. And in particular, he will show very spectacular application of the infinite dimensional durability in this case. So he will show that for uh, k equal to three and four, for degree equal to three and four, so it's not dimension, but degree of the integral, the generated matrix has no complex valued eigenvalues. Yeah? Let me go to another research directions. And this is research direction to which, uh, in fact, the series of lectures, the series of pre-recorded lectures was uh, kind of adjusted for, uh, partially because, uh, so it is kind of more mathematic, which one need to preliminary know that in the first direction. So the mathematic one needs to, to know in the first direction. Uh, there are, uh, in my eyes, two tricks. One is of Kolokolsov, another is uh, Bialy Mironov. And in this research direction, uh, the mathematics background can be more complicated. So some of the mathematical background comes from ninth house geometry. And in particular, in staff, 
we discussed in pre-recorded lecture four, which is uh, actually the last paper of us on application of nine case geometry has a proud number three. And it is the compatible Poisson bracket of type three plus one, yeah? And Frobenius coordinates. Now, what was explained in the lecture is that they are visually related to the following topic in finite dimensional integral systems. More precisely, strongly related separation of variables in flat spaces of any signature, yeah? So the people who have uh, expertise in uh, the group of participants is Jonathan Kress, who is uh, in Kresswick, but also Joshua and Andreas had works, I think, most of them joined with Jonathan on this topic. Next, uh, this arrow is that as a as a output of the research in this topic in the framework of nine health geometry, a new multi-component infinite dimensional integral system was constructed. It was given in the pre-recorded lecture four at the end, and uh, it will also be discussed, uh, or in special cases will also discuss, will be discussed today in the uh, later sessions by Andrei uh, Kanyaev. So this multi-component system is constructed by the way, in the way as one can construct the classical integral PDEs. So the KDV, Kamasa Holm, Dulin Gottfeld Holm. Uh, we do have a big group of experts here, uh, Holger, Peter, and Reindel. So they, uh, we do view them as generalization of the classical integral system. First of all, one of the, the construction of them in somehow mimic a construction of the classical system, a mathematical way to construct the classical systems. But also the reduction, the non reduction of the system give us the classical systems. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, the diagram related to 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 uh, to the another research direction. Yeah, so I will uh, explain the terminology and possible question to study, and let me just tell that the idea is to use expertise in finite dimensional integral systems through nine house geometry to 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 and combine it with the expertise in classical interdimensional system to understand whether it has sense. For example, whether a new multi-component system, uh, whether one can study it and whether it deserves to be studied. So let me uh, introduce the terminology, which was possibly not introduced before. Good day, this is Peter Van Kamp. Question is, uh, apart from finding those multi-component systems, do you get the recursion operators for them at the same time? Uh, so I have problems with terminology. So I have actually two or three definition of the uh, Hamiltonian system. But if you ask, so, so there exists a system of third order. So we have use, let me do it into, so it is with the two component, yeah? We have this use, use depends on T and X, each of them is just one variable, yeah? And then the system has the form that this use, two of them, is differential operator on use with uh, some coefficients depending on U. Differential operator of, this, of the third order. So we have here x, x, x multiplied by a matrix, which is actually, actually in this case a constant matrix, yeah? Plus uh, other, other terms, yeah? So this is how the system looks. Uh, now, what we can do, we can, we can, so this system is Hamiltonian. So it is Hamiltonian and they exist a Hamiltonian, which is actually, well, differential polynomial. So we can construct 
started with Hamiltonian by some procedure, which is algebraic procedure. Uh, conservative quantities. So which which are uh, the which are the uh, also I don't know how to call them also differential polynomial such as their flow commutes with this one. So uh, I mean it's not operator. But it is a construction, yeah, and if and it could could be seen as one of the possible definition of recursion operator. So it is a construction by uh, Hamiltonian, the conservative pointers. Uh, so just to to have uh, to get more information. Uh, I mean, the recursion operator is a Nijhaus operator, right? That that is that comes from the construction, and, and so. Yes, it is produced by the procedure. I, I don't know. Does that make sense to you, uh, Vladimir? What I'm saying. Mm, so then, let me give another answer to the question. Yeah. So it's there is indeed two definitions in my head of recursion operator, and one of them definition which I discussed before, it is a cute way to produce conservative quantities yeah this is what you discussed but there is another way and let me just repeat the other way also for others who may be not in the topic so suppose we have a, a Poisson structure let me call it p in fine dimensional case suppose we have one more Poisson structure p and then let us consider l which is would it be non degenerate it simply would be p inverse p it is actually nine hertz operator. Yeah. So uh, having this recursion operator, one uh, constructs integral uh, system, one simply takes and function dim dimensional the symmetric, uh, so the coefficient of heuristic polynomial of this operator and they commute in the sense of any of this Poisson structure. Yeah. So now in the, our infinite dimensional case, our Poisson structure is infinite dimensional. So we have for this Poisson structure precise formula. So this is what we have, yeah? Now the question about the uh, analog of the finite dimensional Nyhaus operator, which appears here, it should be infinite dimensional operator it is uh, operator acting on on no it's on the tangent space it is, should be operator acting on the variation of this guy if i understand correct no we don't have it we don't have the we, we have formula for p and p bar yeah but we didn't consider the operators which connects connect connects this to so if it is, it is your question that we, we simply didn't look for it yeah, I think an operator that um, generates all the conservation laws or, or closed symmetries is a, is a co-recursion operator. And if you have an operator that generates all the symmetries or the, the higher B, that, that's the recursion operator. But they are, they are probably linked to each other. So we do have an operator which generates the high symmetries. It generates the Hamiltonians of the high symmetries. Well, it also generates the symmetries. Of course, we can differentiate it, and maybe the formula will be. Uh, this, uh, I have small con concern because it's uh, it's. Uh, so we used it in our case. It is constructed by algebraic formulas. It's better the differential, but I don't really see linear structure inside. Maybe Andre can comment now or later on this topic. He is. I'm sorry, I don't understand the question in full. Because when you ask a recursion operator, do you mean the operator that relates to brackets? If you do, then it contains, of course, D in uh, negative uh, powers, right? So it's because uh, yes. you, you have to inverse the uh, Hamiltonian operator. This is not like a very nice operator in a sense that uh, you can't even do the coordinate change without um, obtaining the infinite tail. Because when you do coordinate change, 
the d minus uh, d in negative one power it transforms like it gives you a tail with, a, with you can calculate it like each term but it's an infinite tail but in this case in this case you can generate symmetries and you can generate the conservation laws using different logic from the finite dimensional systems i will talk it, about it later it does not require the existence of the recursion operator it's just you do not use uh, this concept and the Ninhuis operators we are talking about, they're all finite dimension, no. They appear as a part of this uh, recursion operator. You can actually write it. We didn't do it, but you can. It is, I think, in, uh, for, for the third term, for the third order and first order, I think it is known. Uh, and you will see uh, the scheme, which do, does not use the recursion operator, okay? Yeah, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. First of all, thank you very much for your question. Thank you for Andrei amplification and uh, two of these three. So me, Alexei, Andrei, are newcomers in this field, definitely newcomers, yeah? And so in particular, we are, we are still trying to understand the question which are interesting to the uh, expert inside, yeah? So I will come to it later, but let me just continue my conjecture talk and give a definition of orthogonal separation of variables that I mean definition. I don't really understand the diagram of what is equivalent to what. It is probably the most weak one. So G is supposed to be a metric, later will assume to be a metric of uh, constant of curvature, even flat metric, most of the same. We say that it admits orthogonal separation of variables. If there exist one one tensor K, such as G is self-adjoint, such that it has n different eigenvalues, such that its high TS tensor are vanished, which basically means that there exists locally coordinate system where this uh, tensor is diagonal. And such that if you put index down with the, with the help of the metric, it is so-called killing zero to tensor. So the function, uh, the natural construct function is integral of the geodesic flow. So killing uh, separation of variable is the same as quadratic integrals of the geodesic flow under some uh, integrability condition. So high this tensor is vanishes. Yeah? And uh, all eigenvalues are different. Uh, here we require the existence of only one on trivial killing tensor. Uh, it is a theorem that existence allows to construct and parametric family. And if you speak about real analytic metric constant curvature, then this n parametric family survives as a whole manifold. So uh, having integrability, there exist a known classical facts to uh, reduce the equation of geodesics to n simple ODEs. And what is even more remark to reduce the Stoeninger and Hellhoff equation, which is PDE equation initially to n ODEs. So it is. It is a way or the way to study uh, physically relevant integral systems. So we will consider separation of variables for spaces of constant curvature, uh, but global result will not be, cannot be used because uh, since our matrix are real analytic, killing the tensor are real analytic and can be extended to almost whole manifold, so there is no difference between local and global study here. So now let me repeat something about Poisson brackets of type three plus one about the part of the diagram which stays uh, here on my diagram list. So I don't want to repeat definition because definition is half of the lecture. So they are given by four flat metric with complicated relations discussed in lecture four. But what's more important is that in lecture four, a full description is given. Yeah. So the, the, this uh, four metrics or two compatible Poisson brackets of type three plus one are constructed by combinatorial, combinatorial data. So the discrete part of combinatorial data is a directed marker tree. So the marks on vertexes are possibly complex uh, on vertices are natural numbers. 
such the the sums is the dimension of our manifold yeah so it is uh, in correct local coordinate system or everything will be block diagonal and this would be simply dimension of the blocks and the marks on the edges are possibly complex numbers which are here called lambda one lambda two lambda three lambda four and two because so uh, the it is a tree so this uh, vertex determines the, the name of this uh, this h so uh, in the talk of andre late today the graph will be extremely simple it will be just one vertex in this case the separating coordinates are just the elliptic coordinates uh, standard elliptic coordinates and the metric is just the levich uh, metric from my talk or antonovich 40 uh, metric from the lecture of alexey and lecture four uh, so but this levich metric or antonovich uh, 40 metric is also used in the whole construction so they correspond to the building block to to this blocks where which which is yeah so uh, for today at least we need only the levich and noise formula so let me recall it on the next slide and it is a formula we have seen in the pre-recorded lecture so this is levich formula you see that our nine has separated just diagonal and we have a formula here you remember that levich you can put here alpha and i did not do here didn't, didn't do it here and this is the Ford Dionovich metric. So both pairs, Levichvita and Ford Dionovich are isomorphic and simply written in other coordinate system. So this coordinate system I call it U. This coordinate system we call it X. Relation between U and X is that U are symmetric polynomial in X. So if you take this polynomial of this L, it would have the form T power N minus U1. Uh, t and minus one and so on yeah I think I wrote the formula here not need so if you multiply the metric g by polynomial f with coefficient a uh, from the correct side then this metric will have constant curvature the constant curvature depends on uh, the value of the constant depend on the value of uh, the lean coefficient and this pencil of the metric give a pencil of compatible Poisson structure first order so the suitable sub, sub pencil of this pencil extended by a third order Poisson structure given by some exact formula which was discussed in the lecture of, uh, in the recorded lecture four of Alexei and also will be uh, discussed in a uh, in small dimension in the talks of Andre next to mine generates a pencil of compatible structure of type C plus one. So this is just a formula again, simply repeated here. And let me just consider the space GL, and the, it allows to construct two objects. One object to construct is a separating variables. And this is precisely the coordinate x. The coordinate x are separating variables for flat or constant curvature. So the elliptic, elliptic, elliptic variables. Yeah. So if you write down the flat metric and elliptic variables, you will see this guy. Uh, well, if you consider the correct signature, otherwise you need to put here the function f of l. So f of x i. Now, now the for the knowledge coordinate, this coordinate are more adapted to uh, three plus one Poisson structure. It is a coordinate where the metric h from the three plus one Poisson structure is flat. So it is a coordinate system such that the highest order term, when we consider the third derivative, is multiplied by a constant matrix. It is a matrix H you multiply with. So there is the, the, it is the same object which used to construct these two sciences, but kind of the best coordinates are different. And this is a thing where one can try to get advantages of one coordinate system and try to use it. So this is where 
one really should invest time to uh, if one try to use one theory in another theory. Uh, now, a conjecture which I've formulated on the next slide is that these two objects, separation of variables and compatible systems, are simply very well related. Whether conjecture or theorem, we will speak on the next slide. But in one direction of the theory, so if one if one have compatible brackets, then one immediately can construct as a uh, separating coordinates. So in the Ford de Antonovich case, so in the case where the graph, the dictated data, the graph is trivial, contains only one H, uh, the Killian tensor, view it as one one tensor, are given by the following form. So it is a family polynomial in some artificial variable T. And it is, if you look at it, you see that it's actually a matrix of L plus T identity, yeah? So it is a polynomial in T of degree N minus one. So it is actually a linear family generated by coefficient of this polynomial. And this polynomial of degree N minus one, so the family is n-dimensional. So here is some words about authorship, which is not important, at least for mathematics. Now, in the degenerate case with non-trivial graph, uh, one again uh, have a proof that in compatible Poisson structure uh, allows to construct separating variables. And I will give the formula in the case if the graph is a path. So as you see, previously it was other H and now I deleted it. This formula is slightly easier. In this case, one can assume without loss generality that all lambdas are simply equal to zero because actually lambda is defined by up to simultaneously ad ad addition of a number to uh, one number to a lambdas coming to one vertex. And uh, on every of these edges, we have Lebesgue matrix of dimension uh, uh, of indicated dimension and one and three and then two here. And then let me just put the formula for all the objects here. So our nine house tensor is now operator is block diagonal with this dimension of the blocks. The corresponding nine house tensor of low dimension will be called L uh, I. Now the metric is a word iterated word product of the Levitchivita metric of corresponding dimension with the factor directly coming from the nine house tensor yeah, operator. And the family of uh, killing tensor view it is one one tensor is constructed as follows. So the first uh, block of this family is just the formula you have seen before. It is the co matrix of L1 plus T identity. Sorry for jumping. And this block goes here with some other formula. Maybe you don't really have time or energy to, to, to check all the formulas, but the message is that there is a formula which is not bad. And also that the formula is constructed in the term of F L1, L2, L3, yeah? Uh, but uh, another message is, of course, that if you have compatible Poisson uh, structure of type three plus one, then there is a formula for uh, uh, for Killian tensor. So the formula exists uh, in uh, all graphs. 
So, and the conjecture is that this generalization of the formula gives all possible separation of variables for flat spaces or even for space of constant curvature. Now, uh, in this point, I cannot say whether it's conjecture or theorem. So, in the case, it is very so the formula which appears not the not this formula, but at least the structure of the description of uh, separate variables. It's very close to one written in the uh, paper of Collins and Miller, and they they claim it as a theorem, but did not give a proof. Yeah. And uh, I did not really find any proof in the literature. And uh, it's so, so that we discussed with the Jonathan. And he also said that he doesn't know the place where the proof is. So uh, in the remaining case, I think it's proven. It's proven in another paper of Collins Miller, uh, uh, actually later paper, 1986. But in the case of any signature, which is most interested, interesting in the uh, case of uh, uh, compatible infinite dimensional structure, the proof uh, at least uh, is not, uh, I didn't find the proof. And you know, there, is, there are some places where one can make mistakes inside. And I did not see those places commented in Collins Miller 1984. So this was, was, a, was a place which uh, at least the previous researcher did make mistake. So it is for me a question to understand and uh, uh, if there are, would be discussion or comments on this part, I would love to see it. In particular, whether definition of me is more restrictive than one used in, in, in the sources. But this is kind of a personal question for me, which is for me, but uh, the possible question to, 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 to study for which actually the for the Antonovich Levichivita system would be good, and the, everything uh, is clear. So, in this case, uh, both direction of the of, of the conjecture are proven. Uh, so, one of the question is why separation of variables and compatible poisson brackets are related? What is the mechanism behind it? But much more important question is how to exploit it. And actually, in this case, I like to try to exploit expertise on KDV, Kamasa Holm, and Dulin Gottfried Holm in the multi-component analogs. So I'll put the question, which I more or less uh, looked, uh, well, just, uh, I looked through, through publications of uh, participants of uh, our event and put some typical questions. They comment on their publications, yeah? So, I would love to have discussion. It. I would love to have discussion what is innocent. I would love to have discussion what kind of more precise question are interesting or what method could, could exist. Yeah. Uh, it's really would love to, to give microphone to you. Yeah, the floor to you. And one more question I would love to discuss is where to go. So what would be natural question from the view of physicists apply mathematicians. Yeah. Uh, so we have very still a time when everybody can be available. It's more or less morning of my time and evening of your time. And uh, so, uh, if possible, I would love to have two discussion on this point. One uh, now after the talk of Andre, and other discussion uh, maybe. Uh, there will be a slot, or most probably will be a slot at Thursday uh, evening of your time or Thursday morning of my time. So what question from this list are interesting and what speci specification of this question are interesting? How uh, we can cooperate in some case? So let me do uh, be more explicit on this point. So what is art observation, this topic will will be accepted by physical or mass physical community. Yeah. So this is all from my talk. I was longer than I planned, but let me stop out and let 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 somebody off, off, off on the discussion. Right. So uh, I wanted to arrange our
discussion on um, colonial integrals and not sure what would be good time. So um, it's more or less the same time interval, which is after our dinner, that is after 7 p.m. And uh, your time uh, should be 9 a.m. Correct? Uh, I didn't I didn't really understand you. Pro probably was not careful enough. So you sp what day you're speaking about? Um yeah, so this this is the question. What what day? So um right, so um, what would be good, good time? So we have um every day starting from tomorrow, we have a Zoom talk for an hour, right? And then problem solving session. So maybe one of these problem solving sessions can be converted to um, this discussion if this is convenient um, to everyone. Well, it's not necessary for everybody. I, I think that the, the stuff which we discuss can be known to experts, yeah? So I, I yeah. believe that say Jonathan or myself, we do know the, the whole story. So oh, it yeah. really should be for somebody who, who, who do not know, and then I don't know what, what you decide. Boring, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, but it can only be in this uh, in this time interval, right? I don't know how Sylvan. Is. I mean, uh, so maybe, Sylvan, maybe, uh, maybe uh, early morning from. I think there is ten ten hours difference. So when do you have breakfast? We yes. Uh, um 10 to 9 10 to 9 so 9 should be 11 <laughs> of our time from eight, from 8 to 9 so we can meet at 8 for example that's fine uh, so 8 o'clock i should be doneable in in yen as well i don't know i don't know how sylvan is, is working whether he sleeps at this oh, time eight, or, yeah. because uh, so 8 o'clock i think it's uh, 10 10 evening 10 10, 10 uh, p.m in our case so, so eight to, ten, is, to nine should work, and for me at least, and nine, nine to 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 ten should also work at least for me. Nine to ten, oh, even better. But Silvan should, should say something. Better. Yeah. So nine to ten. This this is going to be eleven to twelve your time, right? Yes. But Silvan should say something because he will be affected. Yeah. Um, yeah. Me, whatever you prefer. Um, I, I can do tomorrow morning in our time, so that would be, um, yeah, just before our session. Um, I, I can probably also do it tonight in our time, whatever you prefer. Right, yeah, so actually we have dinner right before the session, but I mean, well, uh, it's if it's just for me, I can probably eat very quickly but yeah maybe and in the evening it's not uh, it's not convenient to you say 10 p.m in the evening it's um, too late um I, I could make it work i guess um but yeah it's very a bit more comfortable for me if i could do it in the morning but yeah so, i'm open i'm open if, if you prefer to the uh well in your morning time say for me, oh, no, 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 no. and uh, in your morning, so how early you can start? So we have this, um, whatever dinner starting at uh, six o'clock, which is eight o'clock. So before eight, it could be too, be uh, too early for you, I guess, right? Um, well, I, I, I could do seven, I guess, half past. You can do seven. Oh, yeah, I, I could do that. Well, it's, if it's a one-time thing, I don't, I don't mind actually. You're a genius! You can do so. Let, let's let's do seven then. Uh, so we have um, we have tomorrow. We have this window between uh, five and six our time, which is seven to eight your time. Seven to eight in the morning. So does this sound good? That sounds yeah. Well, that would be fine for me. Oh, fantastic. Um, I have to warn you, tomorrow, uh, before that, we have wine and cheese session. <laughs> so all the people will be drunk except for me because I'm, I'm teetotal. Yeah, so, I should get uh, well. 
Yeah. Thank you. So, Silvan, should I maybe pencil our meeting um, tomorrow between five and six? And what do you think? I, I can just uh, send you a Zoom invitation just from my computer. But you also send it, please, to, to everybody else. So, somebody, if somebody wants to join. Okay. All right. But it, it, it will. It may be just on my computer, not on for the broad audience. And yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. So tomorrow five five to six, right after wine and cheese. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Silvan, and thank you. I understand it's just you're making me a favor of just educating me in polynomial integrals. So thank you in advance. Not to worry. Not to worry. You're well welcome. Okay, all right, so yeah, so see you uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you. Let us proceed to, Andrea, to, to, to Andrea's talks. Okay, the stuff I'm going to talk about, it's very simple. Actually, what you need to know, what you need to get from the, this presentation is like three, three key points. One is uh, about how you do the construction of integrable systems, the other is uh, how we do we did it. Then the other is how you can see new integrable systems, which look like a generalization of uh, the, uh, the known ones and the relation to Nihil's geometry, three parts. Okay, first of all, here it is. Uh, we start with a finite dimensional case. It is funny because the by Hamiltonian geometry, like the existence of two compatible brackets was first in, uh, found for infinite dimensional Hamiltonian systems. It's, Magri did it. He did it for KDV, for MKDV, for Hari Dim equation, and for coupled Schrodinger equation. Uh, for a nonlinear shooting equation, I'm sorry, not couple. And uh, then, the like the Hamiltonian mechanics, it moved to the finite dimensional case, and there it's kind of worked uh, some some technologies out. And this is the technology actually from the finite dimensional case, which does not use, which is important, a recursion operator because there is no usually recursion operator in the finite dimensional case because the uh, condition that one of the bracket is non-degenerate, it's a very, very restrictive one. Here it is. Okay, finite dimensional setup. You have a manifold, you have two compatible brackets. Compatible means you add them up with a, any coefficient, you get, a, you get a Poisson bracket. The compatibility condition is the following system of PDEs. You see, you have three, um, three indices, they kind of the, the result is actually skew symmetric it's this houghton bracket whatever but this is the condition okay uh the two simplest examples one both of these brackets are constant they are of course compatible because you see here there is derivative then non-trivial example the only one we will use and the only one we need is that well you can take one uh, poisson bracket and construct it uh, using the structure constants of Lie algebra. If you know a little bit of algebra, then this is uh, what the Poisson tensor of Poisson Lie bracket on co-joint uh, of uh, on the dual to Lie algebra space. <coughs> if you don't, just take any dimension, pick up a structure constant, make uh, this tensor. It linear depends on coordinates, and it is a Poisson tensor. Believe me, you can check it. Okay, then you can make a second tensor using the same constant. You just pick a line of numbers like n things, and you just substitute it, and you like freeze the argument. It is it is called Kirillov constant, etc. A lot of uh, second names bracket, and so you have two brackets. Okay, they're compatible because you use the same Lie algebra. Okay, the function f is called Casimir on the finite dimensional case. If you if uh, for any function, the Poisson bracket with this function is zero. If, again, we think about Lie algebra, then it is uh, the center of the algebra. If we think about Hamiltonian mechanics and Hamiltonian geometry, then the Hamiltonian flow is zero. So you just substitute it, you get zero. <coughs> now, uh, in Again, as I said before, in finite, in, in finite dimensional case, most of the time, the brackets are degenerate. Here it is. Both brackets are, of course, degenerate because they, uh, they're, they're very specifically algebras that give you non-degenerate brackets. Most of the brackets, like uh, most of the Lie algebras, like SO3, where you have rigid body and stuff like that, or <clears throat> E3, where you have, again, rigid body, Kovalevsky case, etc., etc., they're all degenerate. 
So what you do if you don't have a recursion operator? You do the following. You pick two brackets and you add them up with some formal parameter I call lambda. Then you get the following Poisson tensor. It is a Poisson tensor because they were compatible. Now, we find the Casimirs of this Poisson tensor. I don't say how we did it, but suppose we did. And if we did, we substitute into this zero flow, decompose in lambda, and get the following relations. See, here is one, and then there'll be one with a lambda squared, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the identity, like zero, it holds for arbitrary lambda. So we get a series of identities. A anyone who did a little bit of uh, by Hamiltonian stuff knows that these are by Behamil Hamiltonian flows. So what you did, you constructed a by Hamiltonian flows and uh, these by Hamiltonian flows, they're what you expect them to be. Those vector fields, they commute. And those functions, they're common uh, uh, common integrals. It means that any function is an integral for any um, any uh, be Hamiltonian field. So again, what we did, we took a bracket, we took a Casimir, and we decomposed in a formal parameter. That's what we did. Didn't use uh, uh, here. It is an example what you do in in the case we've just discussed. If you took Lie algebra, like you came up with a Lie algebra, probably the uh, Casimirs for your function for your bracket are already known. They're called the invariant of conjoint representation. A lot of ways to calculate them or for many algebras, they are calculated already. You can find them in a book. So what you do, you pick one thing like this from the book and then, uh, well, you this zero, but now you can, uh, you can take the second one with the constants, add them up, and you get the following formula. See, because they're linear, because you use the same constants, you can like you can put A inside. And if you put A inside, you find that the Casimirs you're looking for, the one that depends on lambda, they're very simple. What you need to do, you need to take your original Casimir, the one you found in the book, and substitute U plus lambda A. This is constant, this is lambda. And then what you do is you decompose it into lambda, into a series, those are the coefficient of such decomposition. And after you found all these coefficients, uh, all, all of them, all of these coefficients, they commute. They commute because of the algebraic reasons. Here, here it is, because this is how you construct them. If you substitute a function here, then this is supposed to be a bracket, first bracket with F0 with a function. And actually there is like a chain, you can go up, down, and uh, it does not, require the knowledge of any uh, nature of the bracket, actually. It is purely algebra, has nothing to do with the differential geometry, finite or infa, infa, infinite dimension. So this is what we did. It's called actually the argument shift method. This is the essence. It is a little bit more and it is a little bit more complicated, but this is the argument shift method, how it works. That's what you did using Casimir's. Okay. So we see that in finite dimension, in finite dimensional case, what we need for this construction to work, we need we, post, we need a description of Poisson bracket. Here we use the very special one we were able to look in the book. We need a description of Casimirs. Again, look in the book because this is a Lie algebra. People studied Lie algebra for quite some time. Then you come up with a compatible brackets, two of them actually, because you can freeze this argument very many different ways. You actually have a lot of compatible brackets, right? But you need to pick two for this, uh, this scheme to work. And then the last part, you need a formula for F lambda for the dependence of the Casimirs of this perturbed, let's call it this way, bracket. Okay, now I'm gonna show you, uh, this is like first, first uh, thing what you're gonna get. Uh, first thing I wish you could get from my talk, this scheme, it's very simple. It's very efficient, at least you can see it in very special cases. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna apply this case, in, we apply this scheme in the infinite dimensional case. Basically, <clears throat> we're gonna move other way around, like the Hamiltonian stuff, it came from infinite dimensions. Now we use some expertise in finite dimensional case, in finite dimensional case to study the infinite dimensional case. Uh, uh, that was what Vladimir Sergeyevich was talking about. Okay, so, 
first of all, what we need to do, we need to uh, understand where we work, what we're working for, uh, with. We actually work with the space of all maps from S1. And so the point of space is curved. And this is pretty standard formalism. Uh, then we need to define a differential polynomial. Uh, again, it was mentioned already, because if you have a curve, then the functions on the space of curves, they're functionals. So you need to integrate over the independent variables to get a number, a solid number. And um, so we think that X is a parameter on S1 and it changes from zero to two, two pi. You actually could use a uh, different formalism. You can like fast descending functions or whatsoever. Uh, the only thing you need is with this, uh, for this integral to converge. Okay, and we call uh, the density to be a homogeneous differential polynomial if it is written in this way. It's kind of complicated, you see a lot of coefficients, but basically what you need to do, it is polynomial in derivatives, like x, in 2x, etc. The coefficients are smooth functions. And then the, if you take a monomial, like function multiplied by some derivatives, and you add up, <coughs> I'm sorry. and you add up the derivatives, <clears throat> then you get a number and it is the same for all the terms. See, for example, here, I actually have a smooth functions. It is multiplied two times by ux, ux, ux. I add up the terms, it, it, is, it, get, it is like two. And I add uh, the second derivative, I write it like this. Uh, it is actually two times a derivative. And I see that this term and this term, they have the same uh, differential degree power. So this is actually a homogeneous differential polynomial. Okay, these are the class of function functionals we start with. This is not the class of functions, functionals we're gonna work with. Okay, what we're gonna work with is actually a formal series of such functions. We take H to be a density of such functional, and we assume that this density is a formal series uh, with each term being homogeneous differential polynomial of degree i minus one. It's like very similar to when we work with a formal power series, but here power is not like the power, but the differential degree. You will see later why we choose to work like this. And differential polynomial, of course, is a, a particular case of this because each term can be zero or differential polynomial, I'm sorry. So uh, it can be polynomial or it can be series. We'll see that this, the, cho the correct choice of category, it really helps us out. So again, we came up with this variational stuff and we uh, use and we look at this bracket, this bracket here, C, A, B, a, B, they are constants. Okay, we took this family of functions. Uh, if you know like uh, KDV and etc. stuff, you see that some of these um, brackets, they contained in this example. So uh, again, we're trying to recreate the finite dimensional case. We found the bracket. This is the bracket, right? Next, we need a description of uh, Casimir's of this bracket. Okay, we do have a description of Casimir's of this bracket. Here it is. Here I explained it. what is the Hamiltonian operator. It's analog of Poisson bracket. Okay, we have a bracket. We have a description of Casimir's. What is it? U is a coordinate, the single one. And H actually is a formal series in this form. So to calculate this series from this uh, formula, from this identity, you just substitute the series and equate like, same thing you do in formal power series, you equate the terms of the same degree. And you will see that if you do that, you'll see that the first equation is quadratic and all other equations are like this. It means that each term is expressed in terms of previous terms and uh, derivatives of some previous terms in X, see? So you see that this is correctly defined. It is uniquely defined up to the choice of this thing because it's quadratic, it can have two roots in general. So uh, after you did this, you obtain your power series, you, uh, not, you obtain your series. This is Casimir. This series is Casimir. It means if I take the derivative, uh, I'm sorry, if I take the variational derivative, substitute into the bracket, I get zero. Okay, 
So we found bracket, we found the description of Casimir's. Now we need to pick two brackets, add parameter, and see how it depends upon the parameter and Casimir's upon the parameter. And you will see that this scheme actually generates some very uh, like well-known equations. First of all, we take one bracket to be like this. You could check that it fits our family. The second bracket is like this. It's almost all of them are zero. Then we add them up with the parameter, not lambda, but lambda squared. We will see later why. Uh, it's simpler for calculations. Okay, so we add them up and then we uh, fo formulate the Casimir and this is uh, the Casimir which depends on lambda. And now, given this identity, I just decompose it into lambda. See those, uh, those indices, then brackets, because these not are the same indices because when you decompose, here we have homogeneous polynomial. The, here, you can check that each term is a polynomial, but it's not homogeneous. And uh, so what we did, we took again one bracket, added uh, another, we took uh, Casimir depending on lambda, we again can use uh, the zero flow, uh, expand it and get the following by Hamiltonian chain. We see that the first two terms are u and one half of u squared, and we see we, we get first zero, then we get ux, and then we get uh, KDV equation. So KDV equation fits in this scheme, uh, which again, uses the Casimirs uh, of uh, the knowing of the Casimirs of the two functions. The another, the another one is a kamasa holm equation. So uh, it is a little bit more complicated because uh, again, but here, here, it is essential that we work with a series, see? We again, every time when we do this uh, dependence, no one actually says that after you decompose this in lambda, each term must be a um, polynomial. It can be series easily because you had series, you decomposed it in lambda. Uh, well, you got a series of series. Okay. And this is what actually happens when you try to do this for Kamasa Hall. When you pick different, I'm sorry, different brackets, you add them up with lambda, and then you write down the Casimirs and you do the decomposition. The first thing you observe that each of these H0, H1, H2, etc., they are actually series. But uh, first thing is that uh, the first series, the first series you get, uh, because it's for just lambda equals zero, is like this. See, this is the uh, condition for this series. We see that it's basically identity times uh, derivative of x, we can invert it, and we can explicitly calculate this series. This is like where magic happens because, well, uh, from the scheme I described, it's not obvious that you can actually do nice calculations. But here, because we already know that kamasa holm equation exists. So this is what, where magic happens. So uh, you calculate the series, here it is. See how it, it, it like changes sign and you have, Growing, uh, growing powers and it's formal series, okay. So what you do next, you, try, you calculate the second term, but you can try and calculate this series. See, you need to square the series, but we do not need actually to do that because for us to write the equation, we need a variational derivative of this series. And uh, fun fact that it is calculated easier than the series itself. So what we do, we look at this variational derivative we see that, well, if we uh, take this h because this uh, and try to invert this uh, operator, we get like a series with a lot of uh, derivatives in x. We know when we take variational derivative of exact derivative, it is zero. So you can like forget about this term and basically you can derivate this one, see? Okay, now we try to do and derivate this one. We take one half, take it out, and we see that this is the square of formal series. We derivate it in u, then we apply the standard formula, and we do the derivation. And after we do the derivation, we get the following series, see? It looks like this. All the terms of odd order, they vanished, and uh, all the signs, they became one. It is simple calculations. We didn't do any, uh, any assumptions. So we did just formally follow the procedure. But, okay, this is a good, this is, this is like a really good uh, series. 
if we now write the, the, the second flow, the first one is zero, the second one is like this, and we write it, we see that like the right, uh, right hand side, it's, it's actually series, right? A huge series. But, but we see that this series can be expressed other way around. If we denote this, uh, this series as new variable V, then expression V using U contains infinite number of derivatives. But other way around, it becomes which way very like becomes better. See, so you use this inverse, you express u in terms of v, and after you do that, you can substitu substitute uh, v here, and u you substitute uh, this one, and here you substitute again uh, expression v, and you get the following equation, which is exactly the Kamasa Holm equation. So we see that in uh, our procedure works, it just gives you series, but mi miracle happens because these series are very nice, very nice. So you can do the following thing. Instead of uh, calculating all the series, you just look at the variational derivative of uh, your second Hamiltonian in this chain. And it turns out that it can be written as a, uh, the, the inverse coordinate change is, is very nice. It's good momentum, I think, in original work by, uh, by Kamas and Holm. So see, we applied this scheme I described in the finite dimensional case in two particular cases, uh, KDV, which is well known, and Kamas and Holm, which is again, well known. Now we're gonna do some new stuff. We're gonna do two component case. So in two component case, like we've uh, in lecture four, You've seen a lot of uh, theory behind it, but basically in component in dimension uh, two, you have three brackets and they are all compatible. It means that any linear combination is a, a Poisson bracket. And you see that the, they depend on three parameters. This is these in two dimension. This is the uh, Antonovich 4D Frobenius so IFF pencil we've uh, discussed. So here it is. Now, we have, uh, do we have a description of Casimir's? Well, we do, we do, uh, but we will see later that you actually, it's even, the situation is even more amazing that you don't need this description because like Nien has geometry kicks in because like we talk about Nien has geometry, but actually we do, we did that. And uh, we see that in general, if you have an arbitrary dimension, you have a bracket like this, you can see that, uh, these brackets are exactly of this form. And then you define uh, some constants. See, you inverse, uh, you need an operator which relates this term and this term. And then you need to lower index uh, indices like the using B. And after you did that, you write very similar equation. This equation, this identity, it gives you not one, but N power series. And those, uh, not power, and series, like formal series, the ones we discussed, they depend on all coordinates and they are actually Casimirs of this bracket. So if in category of uh, those series, the, this bracket has um, N Casimirs, which is expected again, because here there is no magic <laughs> because uh, what we do know, we know from the deep theory by Dubrovin that uh, all the brackets uh, which are <clears throat> perturbations of first order brackets, they can be brought to the constant form if this bracket is non-degenerate. But the, uh, this, uh, this coordinate change, it's formal, it contains all the derivatives and it's usually written in a series. The, the trick, the magic here is that uh, you can uh, write the inverse of this series like this in, in a compact for finite form, like just write it and you gen can generate this series completely. So these are exactly the brackets from our pencil from in general case. So we do know that these they exist, but uh, like I try to do, uh, I, okay, I had limited time preparing for this lecture. So what I did, I did by hand. So there might be sign issues, like I missed a sign to change a sign. Uh, this is the first uh, thing you need to, to, to understand. And the second thing uh, you, you need to understand is that uh, 
we kind of use this formula as existence. We say, well, we know that this chain exists. So instead of calculating honestly, like we did in previous case, we're gonna like cut, cut a little bit uh, uh, the corner, but we will get a, a nice um, equations pretty fast. But the, technically the method is the same. You take brackets, you describe those two dimensional brackets. You need now pick two dimensional space of these brackets and you need to pick up Casimir's, uh, write the formula and you get all the equations. So what we're gonna do. Okay, this, this, those are the, uh, the constants. I use them for these equations to look simpler. I picked the second and third brackets, see? Like second and third. I substituted, got this equation. Now, uh, if I do the same equation, I'll get uh, the, first, uh, uh, the first Hamiltonian in the chain, and then I define uh, new variable P to be the derivative of the second in U. That's what I'm gonna do, very similar to the previous case. After I do that, I uh, write down the, um, the equations on the second. Uh, we see that after I substitute this here, I will get that uh, I have ux equals to something uh, like pxx uh, negative sign plus p. I use this two to kill off these twos. And after I get that, I get that the second flow, the one I want, takes this form, where p is exactly this. See? So I just, first I took u, this is the Casimir of this, I, it is supposed to be substituted here, it gets you the first flow, which is ux vx, but I took negative sign, so it will be 2 ux 2 vx, then I know that there exists a function, uh, a functional, I use uh, its operational derivative for this to get ux vx, uh, with the twos, I find it, uh, find the relation on it, and I pick the different uh, new coordinate, like the same I did in the one dimensional case, I get the following system in P, see, in P. Now, uh, what I need, uh, I need to do, I change the variables like this, like, a, like V is a square of some variable, and I change M, U into M, and P into U, and I get the following, which is exactly the two component uh, Dulian Gottfried Holm equation. See, so I picked two brackets, I used my scheme, generated the Casimirs, decomposed in lambda, uh, did that coordinate change I did for one dimensional Kamasa home, and I got two component uh, DGH. This is exactly, uh, uh, Holger uh, sent me um, an article like on, on Thursday, I think it was on Thursday, uh, where this equation was written. Uh, I didn't write all the uh, authors, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's not good, but uh, this is the name of the article where I got the equation and this is uh, the equation uh, they have there. So it works. See, we see that this equation exists and we see that if we, we take uh, gamma equals to zero, this is the, the, mm, when we took this parameter, like, then we obtain a two-dimensional Tomaso Holm equation, which again by, was uh, no, known to have some physical meaning and can be derived from the physically meaning systems. Okay, now we see that we took this pencil, we took these two brackets, and the natural question is what we, if we take other two brackets, like will it work? Of course, it will work. And this is like the new Dulin Gottfried Holm equation in dimension two. So I have three brackets. I picked like second and third. Now I pick first and third, like, and uh, do the same thing. In this case, I change variables uh, uh, like uh, this. See, uh, I need two change of variables. I introduce P and I introduce Q. And after I look at the second Hamiltonian thing, I see that my U and V, they again have a very nice expression in terms of P and Q. This expression becomes a little bit more complicated. Look, this, like I do all the stuff, I calculate the series, substitute, find it, do the coordinate change, taking these uh, new coordinates. And this is the equation I get. See, this is the equation itself. We see that I didn't add any parameters because I didn't think of it, because I didn't think of it. Uh, this is the equation. They all have uh, third order parts. And we see the, the new variables. See, you have u is again, oh, I'm sorry, this is a mistake. It's supposed to be without x's here. It's just q minus q x x. 
because I actually integrated it. So this is exactly, mind the mistake, the one we got in a previous Dulin uh, Gottfried Holm equation, like uh, here, see? And the second one is a little bit more interesting. See, you have a P, which is again a momentum, but you have this additional, additional thing, which depends only on Q, see? So this change is a little bit more tricky, but you get an equation and it has a, uh, the, like you, you can take the inverse, um, the inverse hierarchy and uh, construct the conservation laws, et cetera, et cetera. In, and you can substitute here if you want, but you have very, uh, it, it, it will look uh, more scarier, see? So this is the second equation. Uh, like new equation we obtained. And actually one can think, well, if we did first and third and we did uh, like second and third and we did first and third, what happens if we do arbitrary, um, arbitrary uh, two dimensional space in this uh, pencil? Okay, so you see that these calculations, they're a little bit more complicated, but here it is. These are results we've uh, obtained uh, kind of recently, I think, and uh, after the uh, proposition for the course was made. And it shows the relation within the Hertz geometry. It's highly non-trivial. And all these results, I didn't sum up them in theorem, but trust me, it's not easy to get. Uh, like, sounds like I'm bragging, but yeah, I actually do. <laughs> so, um, First, recall the first Poisson bracket we did. Okay. Now, consider the Casimir. See, it's simpler because I, it's supposed to be H here. I'm sorry, uh, lots of typos. Uh, it is M here. It, we had a C squared there, but it's M, so it's square of M. Okay, we generate the formal series. This will be H, this is the first formal series. The second formal series consists of G. It's like you take each term of the series, take its variational derivative, and you get another formal series. Okay, you get two formal series. They generated uh, from the one dimensional case, uh, like the cons their construction is, uh, has nothing to do with geometry yet. Okay, now we consider FF pencil spent by these uh, brackets, and we write a characteristic polynomial. Uh, Vladimir Sergeyevich already said that. This is like the polynomial which relates to the operator, which relates the bracket, et cetera, et cetera. But you can think of it as a polynomial. See, I took uh, coefficients here, stuck them into the polynomial and got a single polynomial in single variable. Okay, so again, those are building blocks. I need uh, two formal uh, differential uh, series and one polynomial. Now, what, what I do next, I take a differential non-degenerate in here separator. I define vector fields like this. See, those are very special vector fields. One, uh, you see those are already familiar MIs. Those are the parameters of the pencil. And this, the second one is just uh, acts like this. So you take the coefficient of characteristic polynomial this one, this vector field sends it into constant, and this vector field uh, doesn't change it. For differential non-degenerate, in here separate for in here separate like this. Uh, obviously, those uh, like in these coordinates where this operator has this matrix, exactly, eta is just uh, u1, et cetera, un, basically the first column. And xi is just uh, first like constant vector field. So you have two vector fields. And then you introduce new coordinates. There, that is where the mm, uh, the signs may may be wrong. I'm sorry. I suppose maybe you have you don't need minus here or something like that. You introduce this new coordinate, which is a, basically a characteristic polynomial of L. So it's it's a, like it's new. It's not a coordinate. It's it's just a characteristic polynomial of L uh, of uh, L. So what you do next? you substitute this characteristic polynomial into those series we've obtained earlier. And you get two series, each of them depending on lambda. You also get a following formal function, like it's, 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 it's uh, uh, density is a series, right? 
And now we see that uh, the relation we obtain here, it's, it's very, uh, very, very interesting. If you take any bracket like the one we've constructed here with a polynomial, and you try to calculate the Hamiltonian flow of this uh, uh, functional, for, like you substitute it, what you get is you get the following formula. Okay, look, here it is. A, it's actually a scalar. It's just I took this uh, polynomial and substituted lambda into the, it. Here you have like I took the formal series and differentiated it in x three times. Then I multiplied it by the following vector field. See those two vector fields, m0, m0 is a constant. You multiply it by L minus one. And then I took this vector field, which is evolutionary vector field, very simple one, quasi-linear. And I multiplied it by G lambda. It changes the field because uh, G lambda is a series. It contains uh, derivatives. So basically, I get here, I get the series in lambda. I can decompose it in lambda. And basically, it's an infinite series. But we see, we see that, for example, if lambda is a root of polynomial, of characteristic polynomial, then this is zero because, like, th because of this coefficient, it vanishes, it's zero. So we see that if lambda is a root of characteristic polynomial, then this H is actually Casimir. And this Casimir is depending on lambda already. We've constructed it from the very beginning. So we see that uh, taking different lambdas, right, we get different uh, decomposing this uh, system in the brackets in different lambdas for different values of lambda not in zero like we did, but for different values. We get different systems. And uh, the last thing is that, well, if you take two flows with different constants, they commute for arbitrary lambda and mu. This ensures that we've constructed basically all the um, commuting flows. And uh, this, this functional, it's actually uh, their conservation law. So see, we have a very uh, complicated, uh, very interesting pencil, which is related, obviously, to the separation of the variables. But the systems we obtain in a way using this uh, pencil, that's like the second main idea of my talk, they, they have a lot of interesting examples. This is first thing. And the second thing is that they can be obtained using mean Hirsch geometry. See, what you need is you need an inverse operator. And basically, this, this construction does not use any Hamiltonian uh, or B-Hamiltonian, tri-Hamiltonian structure. So, it, but if you look uh, at the, those uh, equations, like when you try to do by, by hand, they look scary. Okay, any questions? I'll leave you with this system. It looks nice. I mean, you derive this... Uh, um multi-component equations, different ones. But then what, what are you saying in the last, uh, with the last formula, that you can get the same in a simpler way? Is that? Or... I say that behind all those equations, there is a hidden Nienhuis geometry, right. which is not obvious because here you have the Nienhuis operator, which relates not the entire brackets, because the question was, uh, do you have like a um, recursion operator? This Nienhuis operator, it's not a recursion operator, right? It's, it's, a, it's a good object, but it's not. But we see that these systems, the systems we have studied, they can be written in terms of this operator. So this underlying Nienhuis geometry is unexpected, because I wouldn't, like, honestly, I wouldn't say that this is easier. Because if you want to, like, calculate it, you have to invert operators, you need to calculate those series, and you do all this. I'm not sure that the, this, this, this way is, is, is a little, is easier if you want to get to the, to the specific equation. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. But, because you need to, like, find the roots of the polynomial and stuff. But what I'm saying is that, all those equations, which have, we have new equations, right? 
they kind of have those hidden ninja's geometry. And th this is very, it, it is unexpected and it would be nice to know the nature of this relation, see? Because, well, uh, for example, uh, among all, um, among the ideas which uh, Vladimir Sergeyevich presented for the researchers, for example, let's study uh, like the question, do this system has a peak on solutions, right? Okay, assume that it does and we found it. And it would be really great because this system looks complicated and again, physical meaning. But the next question you can ask is whether this, what does this pecan solution mean in terms of knee inherent separator? See, because there you have a, a very like a simple number of, uh, the, the, the essence is finite dimensional. You have like two vector fields, you have operator. And then you have one dimensional uh, actually uh, bracket, which you do not actually use. You don't use the bracket itself. You use only its uh, Casimirs. So the natural question is, well, if, if this solution exists, how do they relate to this operator, for example? Another uh, great question, which was asked by Vladimir Sergeyevich is actually the discretization, discretization, right? Like to find a discrete analogs of these systems. But if you look at this, then, uh, well, you do not need to find the discrete analog of the system. What you need to do is you need to find a discrete analog of this pencil. And if you do that, because the scheme I have described does not need, does not require, it, 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 it has nothing to do with nature of the brackets, then maybe, maybe would have been really, really cool. That scheme works in a discrete case. So you like do the discretization, you find the analog of this amazing unique pencil, discrete analog. And then you take the discrete Casimirs and then you do all this uh, thing and you obtain in a, in the same, using the same scheme, using the same objects, only the discrete counterparts, you obtain the same equations. So that's what I was saying. So for example, you had two different uh, discretizations. So if you write down the Nienhaus operator for these two, what is the difference? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. That is the fun of it. That is, is it. Yeah, there are a lot of questions here, but not very complicated, but very interesting ones. I mean, if you, if you, if you, if we're talking about like fantasizing, we look at this, we see that this, this looks like, this looks actually like uh, similar to Hunter Saxton equation. I don't know why it is appear, uh, appears here. Is there, is there a meaning here or they just coincide because of no reason? Or maybe there is a meaning here, see, like this part. So, like a, a lot of a lot of nice questions. I, maybe I'll just make one comment uh, on, on, on physical interpretation. I mean, the, when we derived the equation, I mean, we came exactly from the other side. So we started with a, with a physical uh, theory, uh, water waves. And then uh, try to argue that after some manipulations, this equation does describe, in some sense, water waves. And I think, I mean, that's why maybe people think it is an interesting equation, uh, because of, there's there is some kind of physical uh, meaning attached to it. Um, but I don't know how to uh, do it the other way around. Right? I mean, uh, you would have to start with a physical theory and, and try to connect maybe some limit or some uh, asymptotic expansion of that theory and try to compare it or whether it fits in this scheme. But uh, I don't know, that's, uh, well, I know it doesn't make sense to do that in, in generality. Just have to pick your favorite theory and try to see if you can make it happen. Um, of course, it would be very interesting if I don't know, there is some mechanism by which you can say, okay, give me a physical theory and I will write down uh, an approximate integrable model for that theory. Right? But I mean, 
I, I have no idea how to do that or whether that would be related to uh, to to what you uh, have been doing. But I guess you are asking for what would be interesting, I guess. So thank you very much, Holger, for your comment. So uh, what I had in mind, so first of all, I had in mind to hear your comments. I would love if other people also say something, but there is some, there is a system called uh, Dulian Gold, Gottwald Hall 2 and two stays for dimension. Uh, did you check whether the system is physical? I mean, as I think Andre mentioned in his talk, and this one also can be obtained by nine hertz construction. Did you, do, do you know whether the system is physical and can one kind of try to, to, to uh, just compare the physicality of the system with the construction to look whether one can generalize it to high, to high dimension, how number of components and uh, to maybe even generalize it to well, other uh, my impression was that, uh, well, at least one of the two that uh, Andre presented, the first one, uh, it has been derived also from a field context. Um, I but uh, I guess the second one, I, I mean, is, is new to me, I, I think, if I understood correctly. I guess that, that's where, Andre, where you're saying, okay, if we do it in this other way, we get a different generalization. Uh, at least to my knowledge, that's not connected to a physical theory, but, uh, but actually, I, I should just say, I don't know, because I haven't seen that equation before, so I can't really comment on it. So one is physical, the other is possible norm, yeah? And the physical one, in what, in what physical science has appeared? Well, it's uh, still fluid dynamics, waterways. Waterways, but how you put two dimension waterways? Well, um, yeah. Generally, I guess that you would start with uh, three dimensions, right? And fluid dynamics, as fluids move in three dimensions. But I mean, so I'm, I'm not sure what, what you mean. Um, so there is physical system which has interpretation the term of nine hertz geometry and where the, the, the method can be applied. Yeah. Um, what questions, if you just concentrate on these physical systems. What questions are interesting for the physical system? For this one? Well, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of crystal here. And uh, I'm a little bit unclear of, of what, what you really, uh, um, what you really want to know, because as far as I know, there are many uh, integrable PDEs of which there are, uh, say, multi-component analogs. And you may think of the multi-component as a vector, but there are even uh, generalizations where you have a matrix instead of a, a scalar. So uh, the, the fact that you have maybe one uh, new example, I don't see. And, and the other thing is that KDV is in a sense always regarded as the very simplest uh, integral PDE. Uh, so, what about the uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation? What about the Kadosov Petriashvili equation? And so there, I think there's a much, and, 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 and say the, um, the um, what's the, the, the Q4 uh, type uh, equation? I think those are the, uh, much more complicated systems. So, uh, I would, if you're interested in pursuing new avenues, I would look in those directions. May I comment on this? Sure. Okay. Uh, you're absolutely right. And uh, of course, uh, if you look at the, like, if you look at the equations in general and PDs and integrable PDs, it is a vast science. There are a lot of interesting equations there, way more interesting than we generated. We are asking different questions. We have a very nice geometric object. See, very nice. It is a pencil of metrics. It is, it is important because it is related to very many different mathematical fields like projective equivalent metrics. We know that it is related to um, the separation of the variables. And now we know that is, it generates the unique, unique pencil of compatible Poisson brackets of a very special type with a, with a third order. 
Okay, so we have a very special geometric object. We are, what we want to know that we have a very, we have a large class of equations associated with this very nice geometric objects. We, we can classify them or do whatever we want. Uh, if we have several brackets, we need to pick two dimensional space. So basically when you say how many, uh, like in two component case, how many new systems can you generate? Well, you can say that we can generate the number of systems is the number of two dimensional subspaces in three dimensional space. And as uh, component numbers go upper, this like manifold of different examples, it grows, grows. It's the first statement. We are interested in a specific equations. We don't want, we do not expect us to give new information to the people who do study PDs. We say that a very nice geometric object supposedly give rise to very nice geometric, very nice equations. And to support this claim, like, like you need an argument. I say, well, I think a good geometric ob object gives a rise to a good uh, equation. You say, well, I think it, it's not a good geometric object, right? So to support this claim, we provide an examples. We show that in this scheme, in this object, you can, there are some examples, not very complicated ones, which are associated to it. Some of this work was done by Antonovich and Fordy, who show that different uh, uh, shell water wave equations, they appear in their scheme. And here you see that the, uh, like Kamasa home two-dimensional, Dulin Gottfried home, it also relates to this nice geometric object. And the system I wrote, like the one, it's not single example. It's, it was just a good choice to show that it is, looks quite similar to the Dulin Gottfried home, but not the same because you have some addition and stuff like that. And it's again related to our nice geometric object. So basically what we're saying, and we uh, like the question was, uh, these equations, they're supposed to be nice because again, they're related to a nice geometric object. So if we want to study them, if we want to, it's a good, nice equations. So what have been, what is interesting, like, traveling wave solution of such equation because in Kamasa home, it is known it's pecons and here, I don't know this other Kamasa home, does it have pecons or it doesn't? So those are the questions we are actually asking, not trying to come up with a new class of systems for people to study. My interest is in integrable systems. And from that point of view, uh, I would turn it the other way around. We have more interesting integrable systems. So I would expect a more interesting geometric structure to be associated with that. Uh, so we, I'm, I'm not saying yours is not interesting. I'm saying there are even more interesting uh, structures I would expect waiting to be found. Now, they may be too difficult, but I don't know. Okay, thank you very much. So um, uh, what you said is there are many integral systems. And therefore there are many, many structures, many industry structures. So let us look for the simplest one. And preferably unique. What is the simplest one? Yeah. Uh, so uh, as you said that, I mean, I don't remember who said maybe Holger, but KDV is a simplest equation with a deep group of methods to solve it and of practical interest, yeah? And generally it is, it is uh, always the case that simplest objects are more interesting for uh, application. Or maybe it is correct that you should first understand simplest and then generalize, yeah? So we uh, kind of claim that Nien is geometry is one of simplest object. And 
and especially for what for what science it it uh, it may work. So it may work where we have some system or where we have some system for PDEs. Uh, with compatibility conditions. Because compatibility condition, it is sometimes, uh, if they have fulfilled, they simply require that nine highs operators pop up. Yeah. So in our lecture course or in our talks, we give examples in lecture course. So we took actually because partially because of our education, we are not physicists, we are uh, uh, different geometers. We took a subject in differential geometry where which are governed by a system of partial differential equation overdetermined. So it was, for example, compatible Poisson bracket, finite dimensional. It was projected view of metrics, yeah. It was, I don't know, my talk was first structure. It appears that nine highest geometry works very well there, yeah. There is one more subject, which, uh, it, and this is infinite dimensional interval systems, where we put a big question. And the big question is those which I kind of ask, yeah. I mean, first of all, we have a small proof that uh, it may work. The nine health geometry may work there. It's not clear whether it's trustable from your side. Maybe not, yeah. But it may also work in other situations, yeah. And of course, it's all, also innocent to look for other situations. It is uh, again a question which it, it's interesting to interesting to ask. Uh, well, uh, probably my comment to, 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 to long, so I should stop now. Maybe uh, we just have to uh, think about what we can possibly achieve in three evenings, I guess, this is Monday. So we have Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, and I, well, as you all, all realize, I mean, it's not, uh, unfortunately, if if we would all be in a room together, I think this would work much better. But unfortunately, we're limited to this very small window of uh, overlap. We're also getting tired, I guess, because it's the evening. So we, I think, Vladimir, you're asking uh, big questions, but uh, I don't see how we can answer them in three evenings. Uh, so. And maybe we have to ask something uh, that is more achievable. I mean, or maybe we just uh, uh, learn from each other a bit more and, uh, and that's the, the main objective. At the moment, I don't see that this is uh, going to give us a goal that we can achieve in, in, this, uh, uh, in this week. Uh, yes, um, I always ask to, for too much, Holger. It's, it's indeed true. I understand that it's evening in your side, so I am uh, ready to work and you are ready to sleep. Yeah. So, uh, so but, uh, now, uh, so I have a, a good uh, record of uh, doing collaboration in short time with, uh, with uh, people I never met before never had this record doing it in via Zoom. So it, it makes, uh, really makes the, the hard, uh, it's, it's much harder. Uh, what uh, I would love to have it from you is kind of comments and not the comments, it is good or bad, yeah? Everybody knows that probably what I put here is good, but rather more subst sub substantial uh, comments. So, we, uh, you know, uh, say about discretization, yeah? One can understand a discretization many things, yeah? One can discretize time, one can discretize object, one can discretize everything, and one can ask smaller question. So uh, in some sense, one need to 
to, no, need to uh, fix the terminology. So I would love, if possible, to have comments um, on this part in the in the in the uh, in the in the discussion. So that 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 uh, not only me define something. I mean, I have some privilege because I have this uh, Zoom, but you you but also that goes another direction. So concerning uh, what to do in the uh, in the short time so there is one system which appears here uh, come and joined in uh, this is um, in nine hertz geometry and in uh, Durian Gottfeld home too yeah one of the system was physical right so one can possibly look on the system understand how one obtains this is physical so why 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 it's physical what it describes what is special in towards the system uh, why it's physical and also uh, just fixed the uh, parameters in in uh, the nine house model Corresponding to the to the to the to the, to the system, so uh, to see one example where the dream would work, because we know that that it is physical system it comes from the Nikos geometry, so it is an example one can look in more details and then uh, try to understand what uh, happens there. And also, sorry to speak all the time. The third thing, so the first thing was that. Uh, within feedback, I would like to have definition concerned to feedback. The second thing was suggestion what to do here to look more carefully in the only example we have uh, besides, I mean, multi-component which obtained by, by, by two methods, by physics and by nine hertz geometry. And third comment, if possible now, is that uh, Andrei will speak tomorrow as well, yeah? And this talk yeah. was quite fast, so maybe you can kind of ask him or suggest the topics, maybe from this talk, which should be uh, discussed in more details. Where more details should be given? Yeah, better because I look in the audience, and I mean, it was clear that after some time, some of you uh, switch switched off. All right, so that's uh, some homework for us. Uh, discretization, I think, uh, well, I, I can maybe uh, answer right away uh, and then we can solve the problem. Uh, I mean, start with the simplest one, which is uh, ODEs, so now PDEs. They just have a single variable, uh, independent variable time. And let's say it's an integral ODE. And the problem of discretization is to write down a map uh, that approximates that solution and has as many integrals as the original one, let's say, um, to write, make something concrete. And if, uh, if that uh, writing down this map uh, can be aided by this, I mean, that would be great. But I mean, I, so I don't think the problem is the definition. The problem is uh, that that's a hard problem. Um, but maybe if we start uh, with some simple example, uh, and where there is Nigen house geometry, maybe we can uh, see something. Okay. So you do not really want to, to, to have finite time, uh, discrete time uh, evolution of the initial PDEs, but you want finite time evolution of the approximation of PDEs, yeah? Uh, ODEs. Well, first, I, I mean, yes, we, we can do PDEs as well, but I would say start with a simpler one, which is ODEs. And then. So, so for the most beautiful way of you know going from K to V to a discrete system is through a Darboux transformation. So, if, if anything is known about Darboux transformations of well, the new equation, then maybe that's a starting point. Okay, that's great. You said something which we should know, but we do not know. So you said Darboux transformation, yeah? 
We do we actually yeah. know about well, we know, transformation. But, so, uh, okay, Andrei, you do know Darbu, how to do it? This one? No. No, but doesn't matter. I X in the, in the end. Darbu X. Okay, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, so uh, can you comment on uh, Darbu transformation, Andrei? Yes, we do know. Well, when I talk about the Casimirs, the Casimirs of these brackets, which is nice, are actually the Darbu coordinates. They are the coordinates in which your bracket is in constant form. Because your bracket is not uh, homogeneous, the Darbu uh, coordinates, they're written as a series. So in this formula, the Casimirs are actually the Darbu coordinates you use to transform this as this bracket into the constant form of the first order. This this changes also the order of the bracket. So Andre, can you can you give me at least for me more details? Maybe as I understand it. So that transformation, it's it's what kind of transformation? What it maps to what? Okay, it's a transformation on the jet bundle actually, and because your bracket is not homogeneous the transformation does not respect the fibers of the bundle. So it's its triangular transformation. It's like you have a, uh, imagine that you have a, well, it's like when we ask, like uh, we do coordinate changes in on the cotangent space using only the coordinates of the manifold, or we can do coordinate changes on the cotangent space using coordinates on the manifold and coordinates on the fibers. And those are two different uh, coordinate changes. Here, you need a transformation which uses all the coordinates on all the fibers. And of course, it is a formal series. And they are to transform Poisson bracket in constant form? Or what it is? Yes, exactly. If you use this, then uh, this Poisson bracket is transformed into the constant form. It will be, if, if I'm not, if I'm correct, I suppose this is to be B times D. Uh, so it would be a heterodynamic type, yeah? Well, you can't say that no more because you lost your manifold. Yes, of course, it's a hydrodynamic type, but your previous coordinates, they became series, so <clears throat> can't really. Use... Maybe uh, it would be good to figure out, I mean, we're talking about the same object which is not clear to me, but it, this double transformation in this uh, setting to me seems different. Yes, and of course. The, the best way to do that is, uh, is to do the simple example, I guess, which uh, maybe we can uh, prepare for tomorrow uh, and present uh, in our discussion tomorrow and then see if, uh, Okay, so am, am I correct that the start of discretization, as you say, is a Darbu coordinates, right? Oh, Darbu transformation, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, the idea is you do the discretization in Darbu coordinates and then you go back. Mm, no, it's a, a Darbu transformation basically gives you it's a transformation on, on solutions of the equation it gives you a new solution from another solution and it's a it's a differential equation of the i i understand that what i'm saying is that the idea that you need to discrete version of not of the equation but you need to try and get the discrete version of the bracket no if i want for example i, I I'm, I'm just this is like the idea Maybe it's not possible. Well, if I have like regular, we have ODEs, we don't have any PDs. I have a regular, uh, uh, regular that uh, Poisson bracket of the constant form. Can I do the discretization of the bracket? Does it have any meaning? Uh, that might have meaning for discretization of uh, of the spatial variable. Right? Let's maybe look at a simple example tomorrow. Okay. So what would be simplest example in your case, KDV? Yeah, no, I mean, well, just, I mean, for KDV, it's known how to just, I mean, many ways to discretize it, I guess. But, uh, I think we need to start with a two-dimensional uh, ODE. 
Hamiltonian, with a Hamiltonian bracket. ODE, PDE. ODE, because if you understand how you can quantize, how you can discretize, make a discrete version of uh, this bracket. Is, is KDP where you start with um, vacuum transformation with the vacuum parameter. This, this, and then you can take different values of for the vacuum parameter. This is a commuting flow with Bianchi commutativity. So you get the same solution no matter which way around you go. And then you'll get, and then you get an algebraic equation between these solutions, and that's a quad equation. So it, it's a lattice equation that you get then from the PD. Okay, yes. I think ODE. I think it will it will be nice to start with the ODE. All right. And then we will see you in 22 hours, I think. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you very much.